Welcome back. Welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Eden, and I am finally home after having to evacuate from the hurricane. But I am home now and just settling back in. I will say it feels very weird. Things are definitely different. Um, my house is okay, but there's a lot of exterior damage and not on the house, but on like other things and it's um, kind of weird to look out the window and see and I don't know, it feels weird. But I'm very, very grateful to be safe and alive. And that is what matters the most. Um, but yeah, I'm just trying to get back into the swing of things. It's 3 p.m., 319, and I plan to upload this at 6 p.m. So, as you can tell, I'm like right on the edge of my routine. Some would consider it to be a little bit behind schedule. But, you know, we're getting things done. We're trying our best. Um, it is fun sometimes to have a little chaos because it really peels back all of those extra layers and reveals your core to you because when there's chaos going on, you don't have the extra energy to do anything extra. You know, you have to just stick to the core of like, who you really are, you know? And it was interesting to see what what habits stuck and what things quickly were out the window. And we're gonna talk about one thing that kind of surprised me that I switched up on. <laughs> so... We're going to talk about it. <laughs> um, and it kind of humbled me as well because, you know, sometimes when things are calm and peaceful or just any time, you make decisions based on moral convictions and it's easy to judge other people for not doing the same because it feels so obvious that it's the right choice. And then, you know, if you eventually stop making that choice, you feel like silly to have ever thought that you knew what was right or that you could stick to it. I don't know. We're gonna talk about it, but, um, that's one thing, and I've been having a lot of crazy dreams lately. Um, I had a dream last night about one of the first boys that I ever had a crush on when I was like 12 or 13, and I really liked him, and we actually got to have some interactions that were very special to me and so I kind of was reminiscing on that I guess last night in my dream and there was other stuff too I've had like reoccurring things in my dream where it's like in my dreams the 
like multiple dreams, I'll have a thing where I'm like stuck somewhere and there's a danger present and I have to escape or try to get help but I can't, like nobody's coming and I have to like run away and so there was a component of that in the dream as well um, so that was interesting another thing that I've been thinking about is I have found that there is a certain type of person that I am really attracted to and I've identified them using the Myers-Briggs personality type there is a certain type of person that fits one of the personality types that unknowingly I kept finding myself being attracted to not knowing that they were this one type later, now that I've been because my sister, she, she really like we're both into Myers-Briggs, we both like it but I like it for myself because I'm an INFJ and learning that a couple years ago changed everything for me because before that I just felt so disconnected from the world and from everything I just felt like I couldn't relate with anyone and when I found Myers-Briggs finally it was like things were being translated into my language and it formed a bridge between me, where I was at and the rest of the world and I was able to start learning about myself and developing based on my strengths and weaknesses which happened to be very different from the usual strengths and weaknesses that I would see in mainstream personal development media and so before, when I was trying to follow the same advice as everybody else it was it was kind of the opposite of the advice that I needed but once I was able to find like who I am then I could actually follow a path and nowadays I can get information from anywhere and just tweak it to fit my needs um, but yeah, for me like when I started getting into MBTI Myers-Briggs um, it was all about myself like I didn't I, I cared about other people's types but more just because I wanted them to feel how I felt and I wanted them to feel like they can start personally developing too um, but I wasn't really like spending time studying other people and thinking like oh, what type are they? Um, I didn't really care at all, you know? and it's kind of complicated too because it's not just about like the easy test online, it's like there's a lot of complexity to it once you really start looking into um, the framework but anyways so my sister she's an INTP for those of you that know about MBTI um, she loves studying other people and finding out or like thinking what whatever type she thinks they are and so being around her we started talking about people we know and 
like deciding what type we think they are and that made me start doing that in my own life too and so I started noticing this type keep coming up for me with people that I find really attractive and not not just in like a romantic way but just in a way of like I just think they're so funny and entertaining and they're people that I would like like for content creators I consume a lot of their content and I will listen to them talk about various subjects for hours and hours and the way that they think just always makes me laugh and they're smart but in a really refreshing way where it's not so heavy like it's very light and they're not afraid of deep topics they're not afraid to talk about heavy subjects but they come at it with a very like funny perspective in my opinion and um that's ENFP ENFP and I just realized that because I was watching a podcast today and I hadn't watched it in a while but it's this guy that I used to watch his podcast a lot and I kind of had a little bit of a crush on him because he's cute and like he's really funny and stuff but I was watching it today and something made me think like wait is he an ENFP because the way the way he was his humor was just really reminded me of that and I searched it and sure enough most people online were saying that he is and I also asked chat GPT like what type I would be most compatible with and it gave me like four different types and then I said okay out of those four which one would I be the most and they said ENFP so now I'm like oh my god I love ENFPs but um that's just a thing obviously like Obviously, if I met somebody, I'm not gonna make a decision based off of just their personality type alone. It's more so like, if we click, we click. If we don't, we don't. And every person is different, obviously, so even if technically two people have the same personality type, they're gonna be completely different based off of their own experiences and just their own quirkiness like there's a lot of other factors aside from just the way your brain processes information and I know obviously it's just a framework it's not like a set in stone scientific thing it's just it's a framework and it's useful to some people and not to others and to me I find it really useful in understanding myself and others um it's also made me more empathetic in the way of like understanding that other people process the world differently than me and sometimes when people do things they don't have the same intentions that I would if I did that same thing um, like some things that I think are so rude to do a different type of person would just think it's normal and not rude at all because the way they see the world is very different 
And so if you don't understand that, then you can go through life getting really offended all the time because you think like, if I did that, it would definitely be because I was being mean. But maybe for the other person, they don't understand, like they don't think it's rude at all. Um, especially more people that are more like logical and less feeling, like they feel the feelings of others a lot less. And not about empathy, but more just about like being sensitive to other people's um, feelings. But anyways, it's kind of difficult to talk about this topic because I'm trying to talk about it in a way where people who don't know about the personality test will understand, but then also it's like, I don't want to say it in a way where I'm misrepresenting what I even mean. So, we'll move on to another topic, but I do think it's a very interesting one to discuss with people who understand it. And, um, I don't know, I'm learning more about it because of my sister and talking to her about it. Um, but yeah, it's cool to realize, like, the type of people that I enjoy and also, like, the type of people that trigger me. I can kind of realize why that is and then not take it so personal. And it gives me the opportunity to understand them and then choose to accept them. And just because you accept somebody doesn't mean they have to be close to you. Like, you can accept them by just accepting that they exist and not wishing that they were different or that they didn't exist. Just allow them to exist and then also allow yourself to either get closer or further away depending on how you feel when you're around them um, and other things, of course. But, yeah, I don't know. It's very interesting. And for ENFPs, like, it's more so male ENFPs that I'm really noticing myself being attracted to. Um, I don't know any female ENFPs, or I haven't noticed. My sister told me two people that I know that she considers to be ENFPs that are women, and I don't really click with either of those people, but I don't know. It's, it's interesting to think about. Um, but, yeah, so one thing that happened while I was on my adventure, I was laying in bed one night on YouTube and I was watching these cruise YouTubers and, you know, they go on cruises and they make videos about it. Um, I've been on four cruises, all between the ages of 18 and 21, um, with my ex. <laughs> but, um, it was kind of like a thing we did and we would always watch YouTubers talk about their cruises and it would make us get excited for upcoming cruises and yeah but I was watching these new channels and then I remembered 
these older channels I used to watch. And there was this one guy who... He made Disney videos and cruise videos. You know, going on, like, Disney cruises, too. And we used to watch him, and he was very, like, genuinely excited. He would just feel so happy and full of joy and awe when he would go to Disney. And he would always be just, like, full of childlike wonder about everything. And so we used to love watching his channel. And he had a relatively smaller channel. Um, and I think he'd post, like, every week or twice a week, I don't know. But we used to watch him all the time. And so I thought, let me go check him out and see what he's doing. And I searched up his name and I found his channel. And... He hasn't posted in 10 months. And I was like, wait, what? Because this guy had had this channel for years, like five years, and he posted very consistently. And so I went to his Instagram, and his last post was almost a year ago. And I saw people in the comments were also asking when he was going to come back. And I went back to his YouTube. And I clicked on his last videos he had posted to see if there was any indication that he was going to leave. And they were much shorter videos than usual. Like, usually he would make probably 10 to 30 minute videos that would show his face and he would either be vlogging at Disney or on a cruise or he would be at home in his like office with all the little figurines and magic bands behind him and he would be there like talking about whatever um But his last couple videos were only like two minutes long or five minutes. And it was just cinematic shots of Disney and other random things with like classical music in the back. Very relaxing, but kind of just did not have the same spark that I think his viewers really loved, which of course was him, his personality. And I was looking through the comments of that video and there was a lot of people saying like, you know, we want the old Michael. This his name's Michael. They're like, we want the old Michael. We don't, we want your usual type of content. And also I saw a comment someone had left recently that said, like, what happened? Did the haters finally get to you? And that made me burst out crying because I was imagining that and like, imagining this very sweet, caring, passionate human being who I had watched for years, sharing himself just in a really loving way with everybody. And I know people, of course, commented really cruel things um, because people who are bitter and miserable and deny themselves joy. They hate to see other people being joyful and especially when it's a man and when they're like at Disney, you know, there's, there's 
a lot of funny insults that can come up out of that. And so, um, you know, it's kind of unavoidable that there will be really bitter, mean people, but just knowing, like, what a genuine and sweet guy he is, I mean, from what I can tell, I don't know him, but just from watching his videos, it made me really sad to imagine him, like, you know, getting to a point where he couldn't handle it anymore after years of continued abuse. And it just made me sad because, you know, maybe none of this is true. Like, maybe he just found something else that he is more passionate about. But it is also very possible that, you know, it just all got too much for him. And that made me extremely sad because... You know, we need more of that in the world, not less. We need more genuine people who do what they love because they love it and they want to share it with people. Their excitement is palpable and genuine and pure, which makes them easy targets, but that's what I want to see, you know? I want to see people with their heart on their sleeve because, like, your heart can be in relation to your passion as well. It doesn't have to be romantically. And I think sometimes showing a genuine love for something can make people see you as... Um, so I don't know interesting but yeah that made me really sad so I hope he posts again I would definitely watch if he did um but yeah so now I'm gonna talk about bad being subjective because probably a lot of you do this bad thing every day bad and so um I'm trying to think about how I want to approach this so I have been a vegetarian for 10 months now and prior to that I kind of always had this feeling in the back of my head like just I you know I don't like the idea of killing things and then eating its flesh for me that's one gross to it's needless, you know, it's unnecessary. Um, and so in December of last year, I stopped drinking. And around the same time, I figured might as well throw meat in there too and, you know, not eat meat anymore. And it kind of, like, was easy, you know? I just didn't do it. But lately, I have been having cravings for meat. And, um, just, like, remembering certain foods that I used to like. But I've been avoiding it because, you know, it just wasn't in alignment with what I believed was right. 
Um, but anyways, I was driving to evacuate from the hurricane and it was a long drive because there was a lot of traffic and for me, the most I've ever driven in, an, driven in a day was seven hours before and on that day, when I got to the hotel, I felt so drained and I decided, like, I'm never doing that again. So usually, when I go on road trips, I drive max four hours a day. And this time, I was gonna have to drive seven hours, but because everybody was evacuating, it ended up taking over 12 hours. So, we were not even halfway into the trip yet, and seven hours had already passed, but we were still, like, not even half of the distance. And so, I felt very, like, weak. I don't know, I get very drained and so I needed food and like I kept eating granola bars, like I had a couple and I don't know, it just, it wasn't giving me that energy that I needed and everything I could think of to eat was like not gonna give me the strength I needed to power through and we were listening to this audiobook, Reality Transurfing, that I love so much. And they were talking about pendulums. And pendulums basically are these structures that take your energy and kind of make you adhere to a certain belief system because it feeds the belief system energy and everything in our reality is made up of these structures and that's okay but you just have to pick and choose which ones you want to feed into based off of your own desires because if you just follow along what other people say, um, you could end up living your whole life just being sucked dry by other people and groups' interests instead of your own interest. And especially if you are a well-intentioned, nice person, you can be very easily turned into a pawn and an energy source for those who dare to be selfish and so you have to be careful and so I was listening to this and I was thinking about how hungry I was and I don't know if you will understand the connection, but for me, it just kind of reminded me that, like, maybe I should just live life based off of my own desire and not so much based off of what, you know, other groups tell me is right or wrong. And... It's hard because the typical caveat to that would be as long as you don't hurt anyone else, right? And so then it comes down to the question of is eating meat hurting anyone? Are animals someone? <laughs> it's like, it's, it's silly to some people, but in my opinion, it's silly to just disregard that, you know? You have to think about it, right? I would hope 
But um, in that moment, I paused the audiobook and I turned to my sister and I said, um, I think I'm going to stop and get some Chick-fil-A. <laughs> and so after 10 months of being vegetarian, I, seven hours into a 12-hour drive, folded and got some Chick-fil-A. And the way that I felt doing this was, one, a little silly because... You know, I say lots of vegetarian-type stuff to my sister all the time. She's not vegetarian, by the way. Um, but all the time I mention how, like, eating animals is mean and stuff like that. Um, so it feels very hypocritical, you know, which I think is real. Like, I think that's everything is kind of hypocritical in a way um but when it's one of those really obvious hypocritical things it definitely humbles you in the moment um but it also feels like weirdly authentic because you're following your desire even if it makes you look like a hypocrite um, but, anyways, so, I decided that I was going to see how I felt, and as I was eating this chicken sandwich, I wanted to see if I felt, like, evil? I don't know, because I'm, like, knowing that this is a little dead chicken and I'm eating it and I wanted to see like if I felt any guilt or whatever because I used to before I was vegetarian and so I ate the chicken and it was really good and I don't know. It's like, I don't know if I just couldn't tell for some reason, but I didn't feel guilty. And in fact, I felt weirdly empowered. Like, I don't know if this sounds really crazy, but yeah, I felt like very empowered, like kind of like this ultimate, it's almost like in a TV show where it's like a villain moment where the main character turns bad, but it's empowering and they finally like say fuck it and they do the fucked up thing, but in favor of their own desires and it ultimately is like, it's a very powerful feeling in kind of sexy in a way. Like, I don't know if you've ever seen Vampire Diaries, but basically there's these vampires and there's this thing they can do, which is turning off their humanity. And when they flip that switch mentally, all their empathy goes away. And it's bad because then they just, you know, kill all the people and drink their blood without caring but like there is this character development that happens where they become more like intense and hot I mean I don't know it's just maybe it's just me but they seem more hot because they're more assertive and they don't give a fuck about anybody and they just take what they want and without guilt, without remorse. And, um, you know, before where they would kind of maybe 
seem like weak and bumbling and back and forth. They transform into this kind of like really powerful person that knows what they want and they're gonna get it and they go for it and they don't sit there and like think about what the right thing is 24-7, you know? Um, so, as I was eating my chicken sandwich, <laughs> that's kind of what I was feeling, like, I was just feeling this really, I, <laughs> I was just feeling so, like, yeah, <laughs> I don't know how to say it, but I felt very powerful because like, okay, you could say, like, I kind of feel like people who eat meat without understanding the pain and suffering that goes into it, that's one thing. And then there's the people who understand the pain and suffering and don't eat meat. And then there's the people who understand the pain and suffering and still eat meat. And it's kind of like really crazy. So I feel like I feel like I was just experiencing what that would feel like. And it's I don't think it's something that I resonate with for like my whole life, but in a moment, I can understand the appeal, and this is going to be really random, but like, it reminds me of when I was younger. I went through this political phase. I'm not political anymore, by the way, but um, I went through a phase where I was very liberal. And then there was this time where I started watching a lot of conservative stuff when I was like 17. And I just 180 switched and became very conservative. And it, to me, it was the same feeling as eating that chicken sandwich. It's this feeling of shutting it off. And just saying, like, turn off the empathy. I don't care. I don't care anymore. I'm just gonna go based off of a different set of principles, which are just different, but empowering in a weird, weird way. And I remember talking to my dad about it. And kind of expressing how, like, a lot of things used to bother me, but now that I decided to be conservative, it's like the whole Ben Shapiro thing, like, facts don't care about your feelings. And it really did feel like, in Vampire Diaries, just flipping the switch, like, I don't care. I don't care about anything. I don't have empathy anymore. I can just flip the switch, and I can't always do it, but like, when I go through those brief periods of times, it feels exciting and invigorating, and I understand why certain people choose to operate from that place. I really understand. It's... It feels very freeing. Um, but eventually you come back into balance and you understand that you don't have to choose. You don't have to be one extreme or the other. You don't have to be this wishy-washy mess that just goes and is easily manipulated by other people and by sad things. You don't have to do that 
but you also don't have to be that, like, you know, vampire that shut off its emotions and you're just devouring with no remorse. You don't have to do that. You can be soft and loving and live from an open heart while still using your brain and making choices with your own well-being at the forefront. And I don't know, it's like an interesting experiment because for me it feels like I just did a really bad thing on one level. Like, I understand all the complexities of it. Maybe not all, because you don't know what you don't know, but I understand many layers of the whole vegetarian thing, and I feel it on many levels. But, um, I feel like it's a very cool experience, in a way, to do something that you find morally reprehensible, coldly doing it and enjoying it, but because it's something that is deemed socially acceptable, you know, other people aren't going to think it's that awful as I do on one, on one level, you know. Um, so it's, it's more like a thought experiment, you know? I'm not giving this to you as a thing that I want you to give me some sort of yes or no on, clearly. It's more of just like a, hmm, interesting thing to me, anyways. Um, but yeah, it also obviously makes me more humble because it's like, I can't go around being, but like, I can, you know what I mean? Like, so what if it's hypocritical? Like, everybody is. That's the duality of life, you know? Like, I can go around and tell people how horrible it is to kill animals for our own, just because it tastes good, you know? I can say that and then eat a chicken sandwich. You know, you know why I can? Because I can. It's possible. I did it. So, you know, can and should are two different things. And should is not something that should govern your life. In my opinion, your own curiosity and desires is what should lead you. And what other people think about that is, well, a different thing. You have to follow rules to a certain extent in order to exist within society, aka don't break the law. Um don't hurt others for many reasons, but um, one easy selfish reason to not hurt others is because it disrupts the societal harmony and if there's no societal harmony, it'll be chaos, which will ultimately be worse for you. Um, so even if you're operating out of pure selfishness, it benefits no one to hurt others. Um, I hope <laughs> you found this interesting. And yeah. So that's what I've been up to. <laughs> um, 
I appreciate you. I love you. I accept you unconditionally. Even if you are bitter and suffering and you let it leak everywhere on everyone around you, I understand on some level. And I believe in you. You've got this. We are all on a healing journey together, whether you are aware of it or not. And I think the more I experience, the more I understand, and the more I let go of my idealistic, righteous judgment, and it falls away into unconditional acceptance and surrender, and There's no shame, there shouldn't be, um, in being who you are, naturally. And even though people might try to tell you that desires are the devil, and you should deny yourself every desire, um, in my experience, that is not correct. Your natural desires that arise in you are leading you to where you should be. There's that should again, but like, you know, your desires lead you to where you desire to be. Um, you have that internal compass for a reason. So... I don't know. Interesting topic. I... It is funny to think about. But anyways, I guess I will go now. <laughs>